Hi, welcome back to the show. My name is Joe Rabel. I'm with Rabel Stock Research. And Stock Talk allows me to answer your questions, stock requests that come in. I do detailed analysis going through monthly, weekly, daily, and sometimes hourly, looking at price structure, looking at moving averages, looking at the MACD, looking at ADX, looking at volume, uh, and uh, try and basically decipher what I think each stock looks like and where I think it's going. Um, so that's the bulk of the show. But at the beginning of each show, I do a quick lesson. And today's lesson is going to be um, an abridged version talking uh, quickly about Wyckoff accumulation and distribution and also um, how I use the ADX in conjunction with that. So if we look at today's agenda, uh, I'm going to talk briefly about the Wyckoff approach. Um, I don't think you can really leave him out if we're going to talk about accumulation and distribution. Um, but I want to show you a few things that I think are interesting, especially uh, when you overlay ADX on top uh, that I, might help you decipher when a stock is in an uptrend and looks like it could be going through a topping phase, but really it's just pausing. Um, and I think that can be uh, easy, easier to decipher when we go and look at an ADX or the DI lines. Um, and then I'm going to go through the uh, stock charts that came through, the stock requests. Uh, before I get into that, let me just say my services can be found at rabelstockresearch.com. Um, I've been providing consulting work to institutions for the past 30 years. And just recently, I've kind of changed the price structure. Um, I have a much more affordable approach to work with professionals. Um, so if you're interested, go ahead and reach out. You can email me uh, or uh, if you're interested in taking the subscription model, I send out about two to three reports each week, and you can use a coupon code STOCKTALK uh, to get in there and uh, get the first two months for $50. Let's go ahead and get into this discussion um, about accumulation and distribution, which is really the, the major point about this. I just felt like it really wasn't worth going into that without at least touching on some of the th aspects of Wyckoff. And Wyckoff talks about four market phases, accumulation, and then a markup phase, and then a distribution uh, period, followed by a markdown phase. And so um, we're gonna start in the far left here on this uh, VALE. And uh, looking at this period here, I would consider that to be an accumulation phase. And uh, the reason why I say that is it, once we start working sideways, the ADX goes low and we have a period here where uh, all three lines are below 25, this 25 line going across. All three, DI, so the two DI lines and the ADX, and the ADX is extremely low. And um, it's also the starting point. If we had more history, you'd see that, yeah, we had a little bit of a move off a of bottom, but really had spent a significant amount of time working sideways. So I would consider that going through sort of an, a period where we're going from weak hands into strong hands, where uh, smart money is doing buying, and uh, this is a period of accumulation. And uh, there are some other aspects when, when it comes to uh, looking at these phases, uh, one might be you go through this period where it's very quiet and then we get kind of a little down leg before it reverses back to the upside, almost like a shakeout formation. Uh, or uh, it really wouldn't qualify as a spring because it spent too much time below the breakdown level. But a lot of times you'll get a breakdown, a quick breakdown, and then a quick reversal. But if you notice what happened, we came down below, rallied back above, and then came back and tested and turned back to the upside. So during this phase, really, um, we, we have, a, again, this period where uh, it's, it's trying to move into stronger hands where smart money who knows sort of what's going on with the business is doing some buying. And uh, we've got all three lines below zero. And then all of a sudden, if you notice right here, before the breakout, so let me just make this a straight line going across. Before this actually breaks out above this sideways line, uh, we see green DI actually cross over and hold above 25. That was the first time either of these DI lines did that. And that tells me that this was getting ready to break out, and, and it obviously did. And then we went through a stage two uptrend. 
And so what I want to zero in on today during the lesson is really this phase, which is um, a, a period where we're going through this sideways pattern after an up move that could be construed as a distribution phase. This could be you could look at this and say, hey, this is going through distribution. However, if we start to, to, to lay, take a harder look at what's taking place, number one, we can look at the volume pattern. The volume pattern really doesn't suggest a significant amount of distribution taking place. But I like to use the ADX for this as well. Uh, one of the things is on the way up, we had a very strong reading in the ADX to the upside. And then as we started to correct and go through, um, the ADX drops down under 25 and there was a period there where both these DI lines were kind of crisscrossing above 25 but then we went and had all three lines below and it stayed low so we calmed down enough that before we broke out broke down or broke out we had a pretty good idea that um, we've gone through a period a quiet period Typically, when you're going through a distribution phase, you don't have, it's not very quiet. It's usually a lot of volatility and the, the distribution that's taking place is causing this red DI line to stay above. Or if they're crisscrossing and staying, all both lines are staying, at least one of the two is above throughout the whole period. Then I think we can start to get a little bit more concerned that this is a distribution pattern and not really just a pause in the uptrend. This typically, I would suggest after an up move, especially one that shows strength in ADX, is typically when we see this is more of a pause in an ongoing uptrend. The other thing we notice is that the MACD is not really significantly breaking the zero line. Now, it did at the very end here, but there was little follow through and we didn't take out this low and then we turned on a dime after undercutting this bottom. So and, and then if you notice, the MACD line got back above the signal line very quickly. So, I mean, that's somewhat helpful, but I'm more or less zeroing in on these DI lines. And if I see all three lines below 25, I'm more inclined to believe that there's more upside continuation. If we go to this final phase here, we had another up move, we had good ADX reading, but then as we dropped down, the ADX quickly dropped down under 25. Notice how green DI stayed up during this period and red DI stayed up during this phase for the most part. This is a lot of volatility. You can see it in the way that it's taking place. This, this is a little bit more quiet. The size of the bars are a little smaller. And um, this period here, the waves are pretty wild swings. The movement is uh, a little bit more of a uh, violent price action and a lot of gaps involved. And you want to look at the size of these bars by looking, filling in these gaps because that really tells you how big these bars are. There were some pretty substantial bars throughout this period. So the size of the bars are going up. The whippy action is going up. That's more of what I would be looking at when I'm looking at a pattern like this. I would be more concerned that this is going through distribution than I would when I'm looking at this. So we can go through a period and up move and then go sideways. And all it is is a pause in an ongoing uptrend. And then we go through other phases where we pull back, we kind of move, and then we actually tried to make a new high here. If you notice, this went to a new high and ADX was nowhere near confirming. Now, green DI moved up, but then it quickly moved down. And so anyway, through this type of period, I would be a little bit more concerned just based on the price action in the movement that we're going through more of a distribution phase. So then we following that, we break down and then clearly red DI takes over and the ADX is very strong through the declining phase, this markdown phase. And that is going to be symptomatic of what you're going to expect when you're going through a strong down phase. So anyway, I thought I would just give you a quick glimpse into how I go about using ADX in conjunction with Wyckoff and what to look for when we're going through a sideways pattern in an uptrend. So uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get into some uh, stocks and do some analysis. So uh, we've got a diverse list of symbols here, uh, some Forex, uh, some really big names uh, that I think are going to influence the general market. Also, Bitcoin's in here. Uh, so interesting requests this week. Uh, let's go ahead and start with this VALE, which was one of the requests. Um, and so, you know, we went through that distribution phase, that markdown phase here 
on the daily chart, but we never really went through the accumulation phase. You see how it went from a down move and then just turned around and went back up. And I, I would kind of view this more like a rally in, the trend, in a trend that really isn't ready to turn up yet. Because if we look at the bigger picture, uh, the monthly chart came down very hard here. And we've gotten a rally back up to the 18 month and it might overrun that a little bit. Um, if we looked at this peak and this bottom and look at the halfway mark, probably somewhere around $18, something like that, 17 to 18, it, I think is where resistance is going to come in. And then I bet this spends time channeling sideways. Um, just too harsh of a decline here uh, based on the ADX to expect this to be the start of a mark up phase. No, not really a period of accumulation based on the way I look at things. So I uh, thought I'd follow up and, uh, and finish with that. Let's go ahead and look at uh, DuPont. So uh, overall, I kind of like what's going on here. Uh, we've gone through this period of sideways action uh, in this consolidation. Now, we led to the upside with a strong ADX reading and confirming MACD. And then we've spent all this time kind of working off the overbought condition in both of those indicators. What's missing is that even though we started to move up here, we haven't had green DI get going again, showing that the buyers are really serious and they're ready to break this stock out again to the upside. And notice also that we made a pretty nice move on the daily chart here, but we haven't gotten the ADX above 25. So normally, if, if we're going to get going, when we have a low ADX on the monthly and a low ADX on the weekly, what I'm looking for is the ADX on the uh, daily chart to break out and then look to buy the first pullback near the 18. And we just haven't had that happen yet. So we might just want to kind of... Uh, just hang around here. This stock might just channel sideways. I think there's pretty good support in the mid to high 70s, so I'm not looking for a big drop, but uh, you know, probably spend some time um, consolidating for now. Let's look at Netflix. Um, so, and it might be worth just going and looking at this chart uh, with the zigzag where it attempted to break out of this big long sideways move, had pretty good follow through uh, to the upside and really kind of went 500, 600 and then to 700. So if you think about it, one of the things I like to look at is the depth of the base. So if, um, if the low of the base is, you know, let's just call it somewhere around 500 and the upper end is around 600, you can take that 100 points and add it to the breakout area to give you a ballpark of what to expect as a target. So um, just using it that way, um, it did actually hit that target. And then, but the, what's surprising is how badly this pulled back. Normally you would expect what was resistance to become support. And instead you had a violent decline to the downside and now overrun of the breakout area. And not only that, you've had two weekly bars that are big monster reds. Uh, and now we've broken the 18 month line, showing some signs of underperformance relative to the S&P. So just a lot of things going wrong here right now. And would just sort of tell me that I don't think you need to be in a big rush, but it does look like we'll have some support at 500, probably ends up channeling again between 500 and 600. Okay, let's look at Tesla. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a tough one, <clears throat> but if we go back to the discussion on accumulation and distribution, look at what took place. We had this strong move to the upside. Look at the strength of the ADX, just powerful strength. And then we went through this correction and look at what these DI lines did. Look at what was taking place here. All three lines went low as the MACD <clears throat> worked off the overbought condition. Um, we had DI line and ADX at a low level. This was telling me that we should expect more upside. I was definitely thinking in that direction, something I highlighted in my report in this area right in here, as this was starting to lift off this area and get through 750. Now, let's just look at the nature of the bars. Forget the, the ADX right now, but look at the size and the, and the nature of the price action here versus what's going on here. I just don't see this being all that attractive right now 
Normally, when you're going to make a big move, you start from a period of low volatility. That's what these that's what all three of these lines being low means. So <clears throat> if we're below 25 for extended period in all three lines, it's telling you not only you have low trend strength, but you also have low volatility. That's what typically leads to big moves to the upside. When you have low trend strength, so let's say the ADX drops down here, but we still have green DI and red DI kind of taking turns above 25 and these big bars moving, you know, causing wild price action. We shouldn't expect a big move until we get a calm down of the volatility. We should see all three of these lines kind of dropping down, the size of these bars starting to drop down before this is interesting again. So I would avoid this for now. Um, is it going to break down and fall apart? I mean, I'm not necessarily calling for that. But if I'm looking to be a buyer in this, I'm waiting for a sign that the volatility shrinks and we lose some of this movement that is a little bit too violent right now. Um, so anyway, this, that's the uh, update on that one. Let's go to Nike, which uh, uh, I don't like the way this is pulling back. So I mentioned the last time we talked about this, I had a request on this probably about a month or two ago, and uh, it was up in here. And I was saying, you know, if it broke out, it ought to pull back and consolidate. But what ended up happening is it pulled back and it broke the 18 and the 18 started to roll over. And now I was thinking that we were forming kind of a channel. And now we're into this lower end of the channel. So this is where I would expect support to come in. The problem is, look at how it got here. Look at the daily chart. We can see the move to the downside with a gap. Look at all the red bars. Look at the, look at the strength of the ADX. This isn't the kind of bottoming pattern. This isn't really a bottoming pattern in my, in my opinion. I think this is uh, uh, going to test this low and, it, and it's almost guilty until it's proven, proven innocent. We want to see a sign that the buyers are stepping back in. We want to see a sign that the sellers are losing some strength. Uh, we're going to need this red DI to drop down under 25. Just certain signs that are going to need to take place before I'd be willing to step in. Um, okay, let's look at a couple of these um, currency pairs. So um, in this situation, we've got the British pound to the Australian dollar. We had a, a move to the downside on the monthly chart, and it's been consolidating sideways. One thing I do like is this during this consolidation, we held the 18 months. So that's sort of step one. I like to see the monthly chart staying uh, at least holding above its 18 month line. And now that line's starting to turn a little bit higher. Notice that the MACD is starting to turn around as well. If we go to the weekly chart, it starts to get a little bit more appealing. Uh, we move to the upside from this move from 1.8 to, to uh, uh, up towards 1.9. Look at the look at this. ADX reading to the upside, very strong reading to the upside. And then we go through a pretty violent move to the downside, but we didn't create enough red DI to get any real selling strength in the ADX. And then we get another up move and then the down move is weaker than the last decline. So we get a decline here and another decline here, but certainly looks like it's losing strength to the downside. I think if we can come back up through this level, that would be pretty bullish. Notice while MACD is, is turning around right at the zero line. Um, when I go to the daily on this one, it does look like, um, you know, you've exceeded this prior high and we do have some improvement in the ADX, but it's not that powerful. Um, in this one, I think I would prefer to see it get through this 1.9 level, just based on what I'm seeing on the weekly chart. Um, there is improvement overall, but I'd kind of like to see a little bit more strength in the price action before I consider this one. Now, if we go to the British pound versus the, uh, the, the New Zealand dollar, um, this one is a little different because um, we've got a similar backdrop in that the price action has improved on the monthly. We've got a zero line reversal on the monthly. Uh, but this one actually exceeded this prior high. But notice how it did it from an overbought condition. You see how it tried to take out that high after making a pretty big run to the upside. And we can see it even on the daily chart. We had this pause, but then we made a pretty big move to take out this prior peak. So this is one that I would be willing to play on a pullback or a higher low forming near or at the 18 or maybe even between these two lines, depending on how it pulls back. And what it might do is just hover around this area and consolidate a little bit. 
Uh, but notice this has a lot more strength in the ADX here. So I would be inclined uh, to be, I'd be willing to play this on a minor little dip uh, pullback and look to see if this can hold the 18 day. Um, on the uh, the first one we looked at relative to the uh, Australian dollar, I think I'd look for a little bit more strength in that one first. Um, okay, so let's look at Amazon. A um, little disturbing action here. Uh, we f the first thing I want to point out is that we we went through this consolidation phase and then we broke out. And when we took out this high. ADX just barely got above 25, a lot weaker. It wasn't showing the same kind of strength. I mean, Green DI tried to get going, but then it quickly dropped back down. And that was a concern. I, I didn't like the fact that this took out those highs without confirmation. And then we went and tested that high. You see this test? So we get a move up and we test that high and look at how miserable the ADX is on that move. So we had a little bit of a, of a warning signal based on the way the ADX was acting that this move back down towards the 18 month as we were correcting back down towards the 18 month of these moving averages was might be in a little bit of trouble. And I really felt like breaking uh, below this support area, 3,300, 3,200 is, is a concern. We're below all the key moving averages. Now we're going for a test of 3,000. And we're just going to have to see if 3,000 can hold. I don't know. Um, I would be leaning towards this, maybe wanting to drop down uh, a little bit deeper uh, and maybe shake out some uh, uh, weak holders uh, before we see a, uh, a real turnaround take place. Because this has been going up for a long time and we really haven't had a, a clear break of the 18 month in quite some time. Let's look at BABA. This, this was another one that came up a while back. And this is why I like looking at multiple time frames. We get this drop. And I think we talked about this down around 150. It was coming into some support, support here. But what I've said before and what I would continue to look at on this one is there's nothing to do until this weekly downtrend line is broken. As long as this keeps making lower highs and lower lows, there's no reason to want to be a hero and try and pick a bottom. Um, ADX is still very strong here. There's no reason to, um, and again, unless you're going to play it off a really small time frame or something like that and try and just trade for small moves, um, I, I would be reluctant to really kind of be stepping in at this point. So Goldman's taking a little bit of a hit here this week, and we're definitely seeing some weakness in some of the banks um, after they've made a pretty good run, um, and some financials. It's a little bit of a mixed bag, but um, I don't like the gap here. I mean, that's a pretty violent move to the downside. Look at the red DI starting to kick in, just sort of telling me that we probably have some resistance as this rallies back up. I think it will get a rally. We're coming into support on the weekly chart, right around this 350 area. This is a good spot for this to rally, but as we work our way up towards 365, 375, something like that, you wanna see what this looks like at that level because um, this could turn into a pretty big waste of time. The positive with this is that we're still, this is all taking place above a rising 18 month line. So this, this is really just constituting a correction phase in the long-term uptrend. But it, based on the price action and the strength of the decline, um, I, would be, I would be more inclined to believe that this is going to take a while. Okay, let's look at Bitcoin. Um, so I don't like the price action in this drop. Some pretty strong bars to the downside. And then we went through a pause phase, but that was taking place while the 18 was rolling over. So we get this initial thrust off the top that had ugly price action that breaks the 18 week and causes it to roll over. And then we pause and then we get another ugly bar to the downside to test this really key level at 40, 40,000. So now we have to watch and see how this reacts here. And again, I don't know that there's anything to do with this until we break this downtrend line. One of the things that bugs me, though, is the ADX is showing a lot of strength in the seller. So I'm going to want to see not only a break of the downtrend line, I want green to overcome red on the daily chart. I want to see green start to get going, get above 25, get above the red. And then I'd be willing to maybe look at the next pullback potentially. But we've got some overlying uh, resistance up here based on the 18 weeks. So we're going to have to take a lot. I personally think this is going to need to quiet down before we're going to get any um, real potential to the upside in this. And it just it, right now, the, the price action is too violent. 
Let's look at Newmont because uh, this is pretty impressive what's going on. The problem is we don't really have a, a, a launch sequence developed based on the monthly and the weekly, but we did clear this key area here in the low 60s. And I, I would be thinking that this wants to push up towards 70, low 70, something like that. But when I look at the monthly chart, it just doesn't look ready to break out yet. Um, but I could definitely see it getting up there. I love these big green bars. I mean, look at this daily chart. Go back and look at some of the other gold stocks. This big green bar, look at this big green bar. Uh, we haven't had any counteracting red bars, so kind of uh, attracted to that and starting to see that. That's all the stocks we have time for today. Thanks for joining me. Uh, please feel free to reach out and also send your stock requests to stocktalk at stockcharts.com. Have a great week and we'll see you next time. Hey, Grayson Rhodes here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.